Good morning, everyone, and welcome to to my game reserve. Well, first thing this morning I wanted to do was to come and check the Haina Den, and uh, unfortunately, no one is home, so no luck for now. Maybe we'll come back later. But my name is Sebastian, and uh, welcome to Juma Game Reserve. Welcome to our live game drives, and we've got Tara behind the camera this morning, and Mark back in front of control. If you have any questions, send them to questions at juma.com and then Mark will forward them to me. And uh, it's a beautiful day today. I mean, this looks like the clouds are gone and there's a very nice blue sky this morning and it's starting to get warm already. So any station in the north, copy me? I'm sure it's going to be quite a, a warm day today. So we're going to keep going with our drive and maybe we'll come back to the den later on. And uh, I hope... You all have your checklist as well. There we go. And uh, today it's, or every day is going to be a checklist day from now on. And we're going to try to identify as many birds and reptiles and mammals and everything as possible. So if you still don't have yours, you can send an email to checklistjuma at hotmail.co.de and then you'll get an online checklist. And if you want the booklet, then send an email to questions at juma.com and uh, we'll uh, send it to Eugene. Eugene will send you... No, 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 they still send it through to the checklist form and just say we want the booklet. Oh, sorry, okay. You still send it to the checklist, uh, checklist juma at hotmail.co.de and then just say that you want the booklet and we will send you the booklet for $5. So be ready and uh, let's go out there and try to identify as many animals as possible this morning. Okay. So Teddy is probably inside the den sleeping the other youngsters and maybe the adults are patrolling, marking their territory or on a, coming back from a kill or maybe they were on a kill last night, who knows. They could also be in the surrounding, in the drainage line on that side or on the other side and uh, sleeping So if we have any new viewer on board this morning, just to let you know, we've started from yesterday a, a bit of a, it's not really a race, a bit of a competition or a game more than anything else, where Tara, myself and Mark, basically we each have a checklist book and try to identify as many animals as possible, including reptiles and birds and mammals. And uh, how it works, it's pretty easy, really. We just, uh, if we find something interesting, we will stop, 
show you the animal and then you need uh, to identify it for us first. If uh, none of you identify it, then we can't take it off. So once we stop, we show you the animal, we ask you to guess what is it, and then you send your answer to questions at juma.com and Mark will read me the couple of the first couple of names with the right answer, and then we can take it off. If you can't find it, if you can't ID it, or if you didn't have time to see it, or if I said the name before I said guess what it is, then we can't take it off. And we'll do that for 20 drive. So today is my first one. Tara's got two drives done already and she ticked. How many did you tick yesterday? 18? No, uh, 17. 17. Yeah, I, I didn't think that I should get the... It was actually it was a Cape Terrapin, a Marsh, Marsh Terrapin. All right. I didn't feel I should get it because there was only two that came back and one was one and one was the other. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, so Tara didn't tick the terrapin, guys. So if you did, take it, take it off. And uh, she's got 17 IDs already. And I've got known. Including <laughs> yeah? fishy Including fishy girl. That was a nice one. For sure. So here we go, join the game, if you don't have your checklist, order it, checklist juma at hotmail.co.de, uh, join the game, and after 20 drives, after, our, after each of us have done 20 drives, we'll just go through the checklist and see who's got the more IDs, and it doesn't even matter if You can just you can play with Mark, myself, and Tara, or you can just choose to stay with one. It's kind of like you want, really. Uh, it's not really a competition. It's more. It's kind of more at, after 20 drives to see what we got in total, like uh, how many IDs we have in total between all of us. That would be quite interesting to see who's got the most. And who's got what? Oh wow. Oh wow, okay. Thanks for the info, Diane and who else? Few few okay, a few viewers, Mark's just gonna get me some names now. But apparently a new baby hippo was born last night at Gary Dam. Hmm, around 8.30. It might be worse to go and check it out a bit later. Gabby, all right. Morning.
few other viewers with monkeys and other names. Uh, but thanks for the info. We'll definitely go and check it out later, see, see if we can see him. We're gonna be uh, very shy this is cool. But it's worth to go and check it out. Reminds me of the storm last, last year when the storm got, was born. Middle storm. It's born in the middle of a storm. It actually didn't rain last night, even though the storm, the storm looked really, really hectic in the afternoon. Actually, it did pass us, and, uh, and uh, it actually didn't rain. Which reminds me of last year. It was the same story last year. So many storms, and every time we're like, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, and it just passes us and it doesn't rain.
Gotta stay there. No. No. Some elephants as well over there. Yeah, yeah. got some minis. All right, first ID, guys. It's quite a nice one. This one. So guess what it is, and send it to questions at juma.com. And then if you guys guess it right, then we can tick it up. Check them out now. Okay. Let's try and find those. It's quite a steep bush though. somewhere on the other side there. You just came up it. Sorry? You just came up it. The same okay. Um if you if you go in here, if you take this little two track, it's got the sort of four and then it goes it runs around to the four C. Okay, let's try that two tracks then. <laughs> Yeah, just give me the, the, the first one. Okay, well done, Amber. Amber's got it right, and she's the first one. And that's Wiz, Christed Bobbitt. And there it is, just to show you on the book. Go. 
requested barbet. So we can take that one off. If I find it. So you actually spend more time finding the bird in the checklist than identifying it. Okay. Whatever. I'll check it later. Over that way. You probably this is going. It just gets extremely thick. You might have to break down the tree house down. Right, an easy one for you now. ID number two for this morning. Very easy. But we need to tick it off.
and you can do ID3 as well which is the one behind ID2 on the edge of the dam yeah ID2 is getting out of the screen and ID3 is still in the, in the shot Okay, wow, well done, that's fast. Well done, Bet, for ID number two. Choose this one, Egyptian Goose. Well done. Is it gone? I think uh, everyone had a good look at it, so that's ID3. So, so far we've got Crested Barbet and FGC and Goose. And now I'm waiting for your answer for ID3. And, um, I'll tick them off when I get home because I'm spending more time trying to find them in the book than trying to ID them. No, I remember them. Taking, I can't find them, so it's taking me too much time. Okay, thanks, Mark. Alright, so that was three hours done. Not too much activity, just a few birds around.
Oh, sure, that's a nice one. Don't run away. Okay. Hi and bye. All right, well done, Lee. So if you would stop, no, you won't stop. Well done, Lee. Lee came back with three-banded plover, and that's the right answer. So ID number three was three-banded plover. But there was something I wanted to do for you guys, is try, when we do those checklists and these IDs, try to give you the French names when I can. I'm not saying I will be able to do it all the time. Uh, some animals or some birds won't have a name in French, or maybe they will, but I'm not aware of it, so I have to do a bit of research. But if we, um, for this morning so far, I think I can give you the three uh, maybe three banded plover. Pluvier, yeah, should be pluvier à trois bandes. So pluvier would be P L U V I E R. If you guys are ready with your pen, if you're interested to take notes of the French names as well, that could be cool for you just to get the checklist in English and in French on my side. Um, so pluvier, P L U V I E R. A trois band, so three banded. So A with a A, and then trois. Trois is the the number three. T R O I S, and then band. B A N D E S. Pluvier A trois band. So that's your three banded plover. Our first ID was crested barbet, crested barbet, and that would be your bab barbier à crête, which would be, barbier would be the same as in English, almost, B-A-R-B-I-E-R, barbier, B-A-R-B-I-E-R, à crête, so A would be a A, and crête would be C-R-E-T-E, barbier à crête. And your Egyptian goose will be Wa d'Egypte. And uh, Wa is the name for goose. So, and you spell it O I E. Very weird name in French. <laughs> Wa. Wa. <laughs> Wa. 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 <laughs> o I E. Wa d'Egypte. D. And a little apostrophe, whatever. And then Egypt, E, G, I, no, Y, sorry, P, T, E, Egypt. What? Mm -hmm. Egypt. So here we go. I'm not saying I'll be able to do it every time, but for this morning so far I can. Barbie à Crète, Wad Egypt, et Pluvia Trois Bandes. And then we'll see as we go along, if I don't know, then. Maybe the bird book will give me the French name, or if it doesn't, then I can always do a bit of research. For the mammals, I've got a bird, I've got a mammal book with most of the names in French. Well, actually, it's a French guide, and I'm only using it. It's a very old guide, so I'm only using it for the names in French. I've got better guides for in English, which are more recent, but this one is quite nice because it gives me the names of the mammals in French. So, mammal wise, we should be able to do all of them, find all of them. So on your side, in your checklist, maybe, I don't know if there is space in there, you can write the corresponding French name for the ones we ID together. Otherwise, write them on a piece of paper separately.
guys, just relax, just relax. Some impalas here, but they are a bit nervous. Morning, morning. How's it? Good, good. 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 You go to that ingue this morning? No, I literally did it. Uh, I think he was there. I heard from, uh, I think it was uh, a friend okay. from the other side saying that he was uh, chilling in the tree. On the Vuya side? Uh, he's on the Vuya side, yeah. Okay, yeah. nice one. But not, I think he's not too far from the bamboo. Alright, because you almost fell on the ground. Yeah. And yeah. nothing's taken it. Apparently not. That's crazy. It's very weird, yeah. yeah. Strange. Yeah. Alright, nice one. Anything happening your side? No. Well, some in love around Charles Dam, but they were far in the Shalatin, so I couldn't. Uh, it was very thick. It's been a lovely day and yeah. no animal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very quiet this morning. Well, thank you. Good luck, guys. Yeah, you too. You Cheers. Then. Enjoy your drive. Bye. Right. Ciao. Yeah. Red ID number four, also very a very easy one. This one, you should be able to identify it easily. We've seen quite a lot on drives. Ah, okay, I hope you had enough time for this one. Quite a very common bird around there. 
Very distinctive call as well. while since I've been in that riverbed. Very pretty down here. Vivienne, well done Vivienne. Nice one. And we can take it off. Grey Lurry, go away bird. Hello little ones. Where are you looking? In the tree. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I knew we would find something in that river bed. I had a feeling river beds would be the way to go today. Okay. That's a very easy one as well. And, oh, sh sorry. Is there any, any nice ones 
Um, which one are you on? I'm on the one. What the about that one in front of you? Oh, I see him, yeah. Right in front of you, yeah. Morning, everyone. Well, we seem to have a problem. The inverter shut itself down again. We're just checking some connections on the Gunda. So for the time being, we're just cutting away. And uh, we'll just have to see what Seb can come up, come up with out there. Uh, we did have a connection that was a bit dodgy yes or the day before yesterday. Thought we'd fixed it, but could be that it's come loose again. Yeah, that vehicle bouncing around, quite possible. is putting the sound in.
All right, well, welcome back everyone. And sorry about that. Another loose connection again at the back of Ganda by the battery, so... Uh, but it's fixed now, we had to jiggle around a little bit and uh, it's uh, back on track. So let's get back to our next ID, which was up in that tree above us. This one, yeah. Just before we lost picture, I don't know, you probably didn't have a good visual. And we have a better visual now. So that's your next one for this morning. And there's another really nice bird over there. Oh, it's got something in its beak as well. It's worth going to check it out. Hello, little one. Well, it's, you, we won't have a visual on it. It's in that tree over there. But I maybe need to drive a little bit around. I'm not even too sure what bird it is. But that's part of the fun. I'll also learn a few birds with you as we, as we go along. See what I mean? Oh, it's flying away now. Okay, let's see. Don't you dare poop <laughs> right above my head. If it poops now, my head. Means luck. Mark, so I just realized I didn't have my... You got it there? Yeah. Okay, let's try from here. I don't know if you've been talking to me, but I didn't have my earpiece on. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> you fly away. Uh, if I go... Okay, if I go a bit forward then. Uh, no. No? Yeah, that looks like the nest. That's where... I, I saw him going there earlier on with something in its beak. Yeah. He's probably feeding some chicks in there. This is, this is where we were yesterday as well. Oh, is it? Did you ID that bird yesterday? Well, let's see if he comes back to the... Here we go, he's come up, just above on the branch, somewhere there, yeah. He's got something in its beak again, I think. Yeah, it's got... It's got a worm or something. Let's see what he's gonna do. Are you going to your nest? So, here we go, next ID. Quite a pretty bird we've got there. 
Apparently, uh, some of you might have ID'd it yesterday with Terra. And uh, well done to Jennifer for the previous ID for the Velvet Monkey. And uh, that's that's great. We can take it off this one. Here we go. Very nice. Sure. I hope you're still taking notes. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll sort my checklist out when I get back to camp. Did you also see it around here? Yes, same tree. Oh, okay. Same, same I can't remember if I said I don't know if it's going to nest here or not. Well, now we know. Which one? That one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't remember who, but yeah, someone did come back with grey lorry. Still trying to think what it is in French. I don't know what is a lorry. But that's fine, I'll do a bit of research. And um Okay, Mark's saying he's got a couple of answers on this ID but they're wrong so far. And we might have a better visual of it when uh when it comes out of the nest. Uh, Mark, where, where, what do you mean at the back of the Cecil book? Okay, no, not mine. I've got only index to scientific names. But otherwise, it's fine if maybe Mark's got a, a bird book with French and German names. Otherwise, I might. I have another bird book at home, or I just look on the net. Come on, come out, so we can have a better view of you, better look at you.
Yeah, I don't think it's it's a sole book. Oh well, okay. That's fine. I'm sure we'll see some more some other time. Uh, let's see if uh, some people came back with the right answer. Otherwise, we will. Uh, I'm sure we'll find some more. Looks like this one is has decided to stay in the nest for a little while. Oh, here we go. We got Lynn from Canada. Well done, Lynn. Lynn came back with the right answer, being green, red build, poo poo. Merge the name. Yeah, the old and the name. Yeah, green, red build. Red build is how they used to call it before, right? Yeah. And the new name is green. Yeah. Green hoopoo. Or red red build hoopoo in the wood wood hoopoo, yeah, wood hoopoo, sorry. Um, which in French is your hoop. H U P E, that's your wood hoopoo. Hoop. So in our case now, that would be probably up vert, vert being green, V-E-R-T-E. -E. The African wood hoopoe, for example, which is quite a common bird, even though we actually don't really see it often. Um, the African wood hoopoe in French is your up facies, F-A-C-I-E-S, up facies. And this one that we just saw, green wood hoopoe, Up vert H U P E vert V E R T E the up vert I'm gonna turn around, let's take another route. I've got something else in mind that I want to do.
ist ja ein bisschen gedauert im Berg, aber das ist so ein Elefant. recording What you looking at? Something in the yeah, something down in the drainage line, yeah. Could be a snake as well. It's getting warm now, so they're gonna start getting active. on the run now. Not too sure what he's shouting at. Sorry? I don't know what he's shouting at. I won't have a, get, um, a great visual of that drainage line anyway, it's quite thick down there. It could just be a snake.
oui. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Où vous êtes from? Lynn in Canada. Thanks, Lynn. Lurie is Turaco. And, uh, okay, so Turaco what, Mark? Ray Lurie is Turaco what? I would ask Turaco Gris. Cool. I think it should be Turaco Gris for the Grey Lurie. Turaco being your Lurie. Turaco, you spell it T-O-U. Turaco. T-O-U. R A C O Turaco Gri G R I S Lynn sent me another name for the Grey Lurie Turaco something I'm not too sure I'll have to check when I get back to camp Con Color Con Color Yeah, but the Luris are the Turacos, though, in French. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that, yeah all, the, all the other Luris that were, they got called Turacos. Yeah. It was just the grey Luri that was left out of it because of the pigmentation. Because of the pigmentation. Know, it was the same in French. Okay. Well, apparently, it is called Turaco in French, but Turaco con color. I don't know what that means though. It sounds Spanish to me, con color. <laughs> con in Spanish is with. Color is color. Con color. I don't know. I'm a bit confused on that name now. We'll see when I get back to camp. Sorry, Mark. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. It was the same for me yesterday. They, they, they send emails <laughs> for everything. It's like uh, I think Tara explained it also yesterday. We're not doing the checklist on every single single thing, folks. So unless I'm saying that you can try and identify it, there is no point sending emails to Mark like about the twist cruel. That wasn't part of the checklist. But you can tick it on your way, on your on yours if you want to. Um, but at the end of the day, the game is kind of. We stop and we look at something and we'll tell you to identify it or not. If we don't, then you don't need to bother sending emails to Mark for uh, with names or whatever. Hello, Mr. Kudu. Let's try to have a better visual of him. So like now, for example, I said his name. So you don't need to send an email to Mark saying Kudu. It doesn't count. But if you want a ticket on your side, you can, though. I think I'm going to try to park over there. Maybe it's going to come by that sausage tree. Nice pair of horns he's got there. Are you doing the if I don't move they won't see me? Kudu style. If I don't move they won't see me. But we see you. So 
So this is one of the biggest antelopes we get here in Juma, or in Sabisan, in Kruger, Kudu. Males have beautiful horns, as you can see. Females lack the horns. Where are we going is behind us. Mm -hmm. yes. I want to say in case you want to read it Yeah. I'm going to have to reverse for them though. I don't think you'll get them like that. Okay, let's uh, try to turn around and give you a new ID. something interesting behind us. Yes, go on. Can you still see them? Stop here for a minute just so that they can relax. They don't really like to have a, a car on their tail usually, so here we go. So let's take that one off, guys. Very easy. But give me the complete name though, not just what it is. I want the whole thing. It should be two names. So give me the, the I want the complete name. Otherwise, it's really, really easy. Can you maybe pull back a little bit? Pull back a bit. No. So I'm gonna have... Let me try to drive in there then. there? Yeah. You getting him? And we 
got um who's that? Tara uh, coming nine to shot Genesis and is that Genesis? Sorry? Is that Genesis? Uh looks like it, yeah. Genesis and Shirley. And Shirley and then Oh you missed the jump of uh who's that behind? Little Evelyn. Little Evelyn just jumped from a branch. Gaudi, dominant male at the moment, alpha male. But he just behaved like he saw something, because he was sitting at the base of that tree, and then next minute he went all the way up to the tree and looked in that direction. I don't know if he spotted some. I don't know. There's another baboon coming, the female. Oh, and I said it, yeah, sure. <laughs> I fell. <laughs> but you did get a lot of emails. Yeah. No, I can't see if you got the emails. Pinky was the first, okay, quite a while ago. All right. Did she give the complete name? Yeah, okay, cool. Check my baboon. Well done, Pinky. Thank you for sending that email quite a while ago, otherwise it would have been a fail on this one. <laughs> not, a, not a very, not a trans smash though, I mean, sure. We'll see baboons again and again and again in the next uh, 19 drives. But at least we can take it off now. That must have been Mr. Cyclone who walked up ahead and LV is the one that he was checking on. Oh. Okay, let's try to get a little to go a little bit forward. Let's see if we can spend a bit of time with the two naughty ones. They're very playful at the moment. Always nice to spend a bit of time with them, they're very funny. Sure, it's quite dark. So that's that was Gordy. And then we're getting walking into screen now we're gonna have a little one. Yeah, I think that might be Genesis, or Shirley, and then Little Evelyn with Mrs. Psycho in the back. Just walking into screen now, yeah, here we go.
Okay. Can you get these birds? Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Here we go, guys. Your next ID. Quite a few of them. Um, They're gone. Get them from here. I think you guys had a good visual of it. Hopefully you will know or you guess what is it.
And then we can also take that one off. Um. So we can have a quick look at the Gary gang stopped in the tree now. Okay, it's gonna be a bit of contre jour. Maybe a little bit of contre jour, but just uh, think that's. She's riding light, she's the silhouette. Sorry? She's just riding the light, I've just got a silhouette. Yeah, it would just be a silhouette, yeah. gonna be silhouette but at least you will see them better now and uh, we're not gonna stay too long because the, the light is just not with us and I can't park anywhere it's quite thick bush around here and the best the right place to be would be on the other side of the tree but uh, if I try to get to make my way there they will uh, bless you they'll get a fright and they'll just get down go down the tree and run away so Just a quick look at them and then we'll move on. Let's cruise. Looks like they're going to take it easy in the tree for for a bit. The boy went foraging already this morning, earlier on this morning. It was a nice, uh, it's been a nice, it's been a nice morning. So they probably uh, been foraging from sunrise time until just now when we found them. Whoa, sorry, that. Now they'll just take it easy for a few hours before, before going foraging again, probably at the end of the day. Yeah, well done to Laura, and Laura is the winner for this one. White helmeted shrike. White helmeted shrike. Well done, Laura. Apparently, there were quite a few wrong answers, which I'm not surprised. It's not a, an easy, easy one to identify as well. It's and also the light was probably not that great on it. But we can take it off now. 
quite emitted strike. That's also a bird that I'll have to do a bit of research on it for the French name. I don't know what a strike is in French. meters away from the car. It's really pretty. Okay. Be safe, Mr. Kudu. Imagine if we could do a game drive like this. There's no engine sound. It'd be awesome. Much easier to hear or to listen to what's going on around you. Pick up bird sounds and alarm calls, insects.
Bets. Good morning to you, Bets. Welcome to Juma this morning. Bets is asking how many times a day do baboons forage and do they only sleep at night? Well, they would doze off during the day, Bets, um, but they mainly do sleep at night, yes. That's when they, they're not active at night, let's put it that way. So they're kind of like humans. They would maybe snooze in the afternoon or during the day. You find them in the tree or even somewhere, sometimes on the ground in the shade and kind of like dozing off. And, um, but that wouldn't be like really sleeping. They, they really sleep. They go up, tree, up the trees at night uh, to be safe. And uh, actually from sunset time, uh, just after sunset until sunrise time, they will be, they usually have their favorite spot where they go and, and spend the night. Then how many times they forage a day? Well, I think that will also depend on... Let's just quickly stop here and have a look if we... Sorry? Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't see it. Nice. If you guys want to try and ID that one. So we're by Gauri Dam. I wanted to stop here quickly, see if I uh, can see that a hippo is the baby who was born last night. I did see a hippo head in the water. Okay. Tara saw a hippo head in the water. But Bets, yeah, to finish your, your question, uh, how many times they forage a day, I think that will depend on the day, if it's like a hot day or if it's kind of cloudy and not too hot. And uh, also obviously on the appetite. But I'd say probably something like three, three times a day, four times a day. Um, like early morning for sure, that's like kind of the first thing they'll do when they wake up, get down the trees and then they'll go and forage until pretty much this time when we saw them now now they're going to rest for maybe a couple of hours three hours then i think they'll probably go and forage again during the middle part of the day and uh, then they'll take it easy around three yeah around three four o'clock in the afternoon we sometimes when we go on drive we find them in the shade either playing or dozing off taking it easy around three four o'clock and uh, then they might forage again a little bit before sunset time, before they go up the trees again. To sleep for the night. Nice shot. Quite nice to see them outside the water like this. Catching the sun, catching the sun rays, warming up. Um, because this is, uh, even though I'm not giving you the name, it's a reptile, so it's a cold-blooded animal and it needs the sun to get warm, to get active. Look on that hippo head, no. Mm, oh, there. Is that the baby? Mm -hmm. Huh? Could be. Could be. <laughs> there, here we go. Yeah, uh, like yeah, I think it is the baby. Oh, it's definitely very young. Hello, little one. Welcome to Gary Dam. Cute. Now, if you stand that spot, I'm sure it's gonna come up again. Did everybody? Um, did, did, did people actually see the bird? I'm not too sure. Uh, I think they saw a female getting out. Is he like mid, mid no, it looks like he's a little. He's not like from last night, though. It looks like he's uh, definitely a few days few days old because I remember when Storm was born Storm was even smaller than that the first time I saw him so I'm not too sure 
I'm not too sure what happened. How did you guys see it happening last night uh, on the dam cam? I think they saw a female leaving and coming back with a baby, but maybe she didn't give birth last time. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, okay, I see, all right. All right, so maybe I misunderstood Mark this morning. It's not like nobody said that he was born last night. It's just some email came in saying that there was a new baby uh, at Gary Dam who arrived last night. And I don't know why this morning I thought I, uh, I took it as like a new baby was born last night. But yeah, no, it's definitely a few days, maybe even a couple of weeks old. <coughs> And first prize goes to Randy in Iowa. Well done, Randy, for the water monitor lizard. Water monitor lizard. So you can take that one off in the reptile uh, section of our checklist. I'd like to see him outside the water, that baby hippo. <laughs> Yeah, let's get going. Oh, is it gone now? I'm oh, no, still there. Sorry? Um, yeah, now that we've got its name for people who missed it or who didn't send the right name, here we go. Water monitor lizard. And you get two different kind of monitors, the rock monitor and the water monitor. And you find the differences on the, the differences will be on the patterns on the skin, the, the 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 color, and also the head of the rock monitor would be different than the head of the water monitor. And generally, they have the same kind of look, uh, same uh, uh, yeah, same anat anatomy, and uh, just a few different patterns are just slightly different on the rock monitor and the head as well okay and I think in French your water monitor would be your varan v-a-r-a-n v-a-r-a-n varan v-a-r-a-n Varan du Nil, yeah, Varan du Nil, nice one. Nil being the Nile River. So if you want the old, the full name would be for the water monitor, would be Varan du Nil. D I, uh, sorry, D U. And then next word, word would be Nil, N I L. Uh, in English, it's the Nile River, N I L E. In French, we just call it Nil, N-I-L, Nil River, Baron du Nil. I haven't been on Vubo Road for a while, so let's just go and check it out a little bit this morning.
you guys want to try to ID this one, you usually find it, I'm sure, on the, uh, the zoomies on Gary Dam. Gary Dam Cam. Very common bird around, yeah? Very noisy as well. They're displaying at the moment, yeah. Well, they were. Gone to that maula over there, quite far. But I'm sure you had a good look at it. Very shiny, uh, yeah, very shiny feathers, the yellow eye. Very common. Flowers smell very nice, eh? Sorry? You can't smell them. Oh. When you drive under the tree, you just smell, you just smell them. It's a very strong, sweet smell. Is that the, what is that, the gardenia? Yeah. Here we go, flowers for the ladies. Gardenia flower. I wish you could get the smell of it. <sighs> Quite a lot of flowers on, on this one. Quite a few of them. And it's in the background, that one will, op will open in a few days.
morning to you, Kim. Welcome to Juma. Kim is asking when is the last time we saw Kerula, when and where. Trying to think, we had Dambilu and Michu for the last couple of days. On the 16th. If they go to the Juma webpage, there's a blog. Atar is saying there is a blog on the Juma webpage about when uh, she saw Kerula the last time. So that was on the 16th. What happened on the 16th? It was my last drive, not yesterday, so it would be four days ago. Two days ago. Four days ago. Four days ago, yeah. She was on Triple M with Shiminzi. Okay, she was on she, trip she was on Triple M with Shivinzi. So here we go. 16. Four days ago on Triple M. Oh, if it, if, if um, just uh, repeat that for me, Mark, please. Yeah. Wow. Hello, Jumbo. There's another one in the back of the termite mound over there. We we'll can't really see him yet. We'll uh, get a bit of visual later. Uh, this one's got quite a big right tusk, and his left tusk is uh, broken enough. You'll have uh, maybe a better view at it later on. But um, Bates was asking about rock monitors, if they go in the water as often as uh, water monitors do. No, they don't. That's, they spend more time in land. They will get to the water to drink, obviously, but they, uh, the water monitor will also be spending a bit of time in land. But his lifestyle is more around rivers and dams, water holes, and uh, spending way more time inside the water than the rock monitor would, that's for sure. Um, let's put it that way, your chances to find a rock monitor completely immersed in the water like you would find a water monitor are quite slim. So you probably see what I meant by his left tusk now. And they're both quite thick. I mean, his right tusk is probably as thick as my as my thigh would be. And uh, we did get a right answer from, uh, who was that from again, Mark? From RC. Well done, RC. I know for a fact that RC is pretty sharp with his birds. But well done, RC in the Netherlands with his glossy starling. Which gloss is stunning? Borchel's gloss is stunning. He wrote everything. I did write Borchel's gloss is stunning. Yeah, Mark. Okay.
<coughs> Excuse me. warm now. Where are you going, big guy? Sure, I hear the other one in the background, I don't know what is breaking there, but it's pretty big. Putting, uh, pushing a tree down, I think. The inverter is beeping now. Oh, 
Tara. Got quite a nice. Uh, don't want to, I don't want to say the name, but there's a nice bird on that branch over there. There's actually a couple of nice ones. Uh, that tree over there, the big one. Yeah. But uh, he's uh, he's behind the branch now, so you won't see him. Just maybe stay on the elephant, and um, let's. Yeah, we got. It's coming out again. Can you see him? There. No, no, there's no. still one on the branch. There are actually two. Well, this one's through, but there is another one there. At, at the end of that. Yeah, here we go, you got it. So. No, no, no. No, no. Not that one. Oh, no, sorry, I'm talking to Mark. Okay, it's got. I'm not even too sure what that was, but I know the general name. Um, if you guys want to try and ID this one, do you know what it was, Ta? I briefly saw it. Let's just see if it comes back. Uh, I think it's back. Yeah, Star is not too sure either. So. Let's see exactly who it was. There it is again. Oh, is that another one? I can't see nicely on my monitor. Yeah, those are different. Yeah. Those are different. That, that's what I was saying. There are quite a few interesting birds in that tree. Ooh. And there are lots of... Yeah, there's something going on there. And there are again, a new species of birds there. That we've already... Uh. Sure. Something is going on. Something is going on. Yeah, they're fighting over a hole in the tree. But it, okay, that one in the background, you guys can try to ID it. It's I'm sure you know it. We see we see them quite often with the red beak. Um, there are like at least three or four different species of birds in that tree at that moment, and the tree orchid as well. And there is a very, here we go, this one, this one, please identify it as well. You know this one. Most of you will know that one. Very distinctive call as well. A beautiful bird for not a very pretty call, actually. Um, so these two, you can identify. And then the one before with the right beak, you can identify as well. And then... I think unfortunately the ones that I wanted you to ID at first, I think they're gone now. There's something they all want in that tree. Well, they're fighting around the hole. They must, maybe there is a nest. Maybe those two have a nest in there. And they're trying to protect it from the other birds. Oh, and he's gone. Yeah, I know, I just realized as well. <laughs> we didn't even hear him leaving. But, uh, I, yeah, here we go. You see... Yeah, they might have a nest in that tree. Okay, so we'll concentrate on these two species, guys. The first one with the red bill that you see often. Uh, we see it often, especially around uh, uh, big mammals. I'll give you a clue around, uh, especially around buffaloes, for example. And then the second one, very colorful bird with probably around 20 to 25 different colors of feathers on its body. Okay, now we've got a new species again coming. Oh no, which one? Uh, I can't see. Yeah. Okay, no, it's not. I don't want this one. I want the first one. 
but it's gone. It's not coming back. That's fine. We'll ID it another day. Sorry. Yeah, that's the the first yeah. the first one that I'm trying that I'm I've asked them to ID. That's the one with the red bill, red beak. But to be honest with you, at first in that tree there were a couple of woodpeckers, and that's what I wanted you to ID. Uh, I wasn't too sure which woodpeckers it was either and I also didn't have enough time to ID what species of woodpecker it was um, because they flew away but then as we concentrated on the woodpeckers then we realized that there were quite a few species of birds in that tree so we're trying we're gonna try see if you guys can ID two of them Ellie is gone now, he's gone down the drainage line. I'm not too sure I can get there, I can try. I can try to catch up with that Ellie. Well, well done to Bates. Bates is the first one who came back with the right answer for the second ID, the colorful bird that was lilac breasted roller. So well done, Bates. And there's still no right answer for the first ID, the one with the red beak. And Pinky is the winner for the first Binky, Binky, sorry, Binky. Binky is the winner for the first one, which was the red billed Oxpecker. That's why I was giving you a clue saying they're usually around big mammals like buffaloes. Um, they feed on ticks. Their main diet is uh, ticks. So. Red billed oxpecker and lilac breasted roller. So he's enjoying that tree. <laughs> And I'm trying to think about the French names for these two now. Your lilac breasted roller would be... I think it would be your Rollier. Roller is definitely Rollier. R-O-L-L-I-E-R. Rollier. D'Abyssini. Abyssini is... Uh, uh, I think you spell it A-B-A. -A. No, A-B-Y. B-C-E. A-B-Y. Double S I. N I E. If I'm not wrong, Rolier d'Abyssini. I remember seeing quite a lot of them when I was in Cameroon. Rolier d'Abyssini. Then your red billed Oxpecker. I knew what Oxpecker was in French before. So something's going on over there as well. Does it's a pair. It's the, these, the yeah, yeah. So the I rollers. Think maybe they were fighting over a nesting site. Hmm. Because there are what four of them. It's two pairs, like three or four ro uh, rollers over there. Eh? Is it? Yeah. Oh, they, they could be fighting them. I thought you meant over the 
No, 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 in that new tree. I don't know, there's something going on in that tree over there, so, but it's far away, we can't really show you on the camera now, guys. Um, but yeah, those rollers are up to something. Okay, Seb, what is Oxpecker in French again? To come back to me. Uh, I thought maybe the scientific name would help me, but it's no scientific name doesn't ring a bell. So that other big bull is coming now towards towards this one at <laughs> quite uh, fast fast speed. Uh, Tara can hear me. to greet him. Both feeding on the same tree now. It's dipping quite a lot now. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, we're gonna have to. Alright, I'm gonna just pull out of the sighting. I should actually call it, it in. It does a few beeps and it doesn't do anything. It's I should actually call it in. Where, where are we exactly now? Just yeah, like almost. Uh, stations, I've got two Madoda and Love in the drainage line on Mvubu Road. Okay. Yeah, inverter is beeping quite fast. So, let me just pull out of the sighting.
porque <clears throat> alright guys unfortunately I have to call it a day or morning at least uh, inverter is beeping quite fast now so if I want to drain the battery so we'll have to go and put the vehicle on charge but uh, yeah, I actually enjoy that ch checklist it's quite nice to get into doing a lot of birds like that thank you for your help thank you for your answers and everything I think we did tick quite a lot of birds this morning a lot of Mark, do you have a, how many do you have, how many did you write down? Twelve, ah, not bad. Okay, well, we'll see what we come across this afternoon. Uh, but so far, so good. And uh, thank you for your questions, thanks for everything. Thank you, Mark, behind the camera, Mark in, uh, Tara behind the camera and Mark in FC. And uh, join us again this afternoon, 3.30 Central African time. I'll be presenting and uh, Mark will be in FC and Tara behind the camera again. Uh, but from now, for now, from myself and everyone here at Juma, have a nice day or uh, good evening and I'll speak to you later. Bye for now. Morning everybody, Mark here in Final Control. Thank you for joining us this morning. Quite unusual after the few days of rain and cloud that we've had. We've got a lovely day today and there's not much out, but nice to see some elephants at the end of drive. And thanks for sending in all your answers for our checklist challenge, starting off with a bang. Hopefully we can carry that on in the next 30 days, or 29, 28 and a half days. So, good night to those of you going to sleep, and have a wonderful day for those of you on our time zone, wherever you are on the planet. Take care, and we'll see you later this afternoon. Bye for now.